We're now going to talk about how we find the domain of a function when all we're given is the function. And this is really important because this tells us a lot about the graph of a function. And so the agreement is that unless we're told otherwise, that the domain is the largest possible set of numbers where the following conditions are true. We don't divide by 0. And 2, we don't take the even root of a negative number. And there's other conditions here as well, but basically what we're saying is that when we plug a number in, it's in the domain. If it doesn't give us a non-real number. As long as it's a real in, real out, then we get what we want out of it. So, the first example we're going to look at is f of x equals 1 over 4 minus x squared. Well, this doesn't have any even roots, so it's only rule number 1 that we need to worry about. We cannot look at this and allow this denominator to be 0. So what we want is 4 minus x squared to not be equal to 0. Well, that's pretty straightforward. We look at this, and we solve for x squared. And we're going to pretend it's an equal sign, but we're really ruling out numbers. So we solve minus x squared equals minus 4. Let's multiply both sides. So subtract 4 from both sides is not equal to multiply both sides by a negative. That gives me x squared equals positive 4. Well, that's great, because when we take the square root of both sides, that means that x squared cannot equal plus or minus 2. Remember, we always add the plus or minus when we use the square root of a variable. Oops, and the x squared's gone. So x can't be positive or negative 2. Now, there's a couple of ways of writing that. We can write this all values of x. Remember, it's set builder, largest possible set, such that x does not equal 2 or x does not equal negative 2. We could also write this in interval notation. This is really interesting. It goes from minus infinity to minus 2, union minus 2 to 2, union 2 to infinity. Notice that I used parentheses around the variables, and I listed them twice, so the only thing being excluded is 2 and negative 2. Negative 1.9999978.53 works. It's not negative 2. And so these are the two ways of doing it. Our next example Suppose that we have a new function, g of x equals the square root of x minus 3. And we look at this, and it's got an even root. So we can't let take the even root of a negative number. That means whatever's on the inside, our radicand here, has to be greater than or equal to 0. Solve this. x has to be greater than or equal to 3 when we add 3 to both sides. And we're done. It's the set of all numbers such that x is greater than or equal to 3. Or in interval notation, it goes from 3 to infinity. All the numbers, including 3, bigger than 3, up to positive infinity. So that one was pretty easy. What if we let h of x equal 1 over the square root of x minus 5? Well, this one gets a little bit harder because we have two things going on. First, this can't be equal to 0 because it's on the bottom. So the square root of x minus 5 can't equal 0. But the good news is that it's only going to return positive, so that works out pretty well for us. But we also have the case that x minus 5 has to be greater than or equal to 0. Well, these two combine to say that what we really want to solve is this radicand, x minus 5, is greater than 0. Because if it is 0, then we'll have 1 over 0, which doesn't work. So we're going to rule out the or equals because of that. Well, add 5 to both sides and x has to be greater than 5. So our set builder is all values of x, such that x is bigger than 5, or our interval notation is 5 with a parenthesis to infinity. And the reason we need the parentheses again is because the radical's on the bottom, so we have to rule out the fact that it can give a 0, which rules out the or equals component. Okay? One final example. Suppose that p of x is equal to the square root of x squared minus x minus 6. Well, here, remember that because it's an even root, it can't. what's inside 
can't be negative, so it's got to be greater than or equal to 0. This factors as x minus 3, x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. This is a, a quadratic inequality, so all we have to do is put our numbers on, the minus 2 and the 3. They're both filled in circles because it's an or equals and they're both from the top. We get x minus 3, x plus 2, and then our final product, the whole thing. Well, x minus 3 is 0 at negative 3, positive to the right, negative to the left. x plus 2 is 0 at negative 2, positive to the right, negative to the left. A negative times a negative is a positive. A negative times a positive is a negative, and a positive times a positive is a positive. Since we're greater than or equal to 0, we shade in the positive regions. And so we're just going to go straight to interval notation for this one. It goes from minus infinity to minus 2, union 3 to infinity. And it's important to note that this particular book prefers interval notation to anything else, so make sure you can give your answer in interval notation. And that's how we find the domain of functions.